San Francisco and this is where Halle Berry narrowly escaped an attempt on her life in Cloud Atlas. Only it's not, it's Glasgow, Scotland. Location trickery. A lot of people in life say they want to do something artistic or creative, but they don't know what that could be. For instance, some people might come and see your, sh your live show. They go, he's brilliant, he's funny. I, could, I can't really tell jokes like that, but I kind of want to do something whether it be make a short film, write a song, just do, there's an inbuilt want to do something creative. A lot of people are like that, but I think also there's a lot of mythology around creativity, isn't there? A mythology of inspiration and genius, which I barely believe in as a concept. Um, and, you know, it's kind of hard for people sometimes to, to identify with really making stuff, which is a lot of grind. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So, like, if you want to be a great director, there's a lot of getting up at, five in the morning to get in a van and wreck your location or you know if you want to be a stand-up there's a lot of there's a lot of grim days where you write one joke <laughs> that works and that's a great day <laughs> like, as a stand-up like the rate we work at if you wrote one really good joke a day you'd be writing like two and a half hours of material a year mm -hmm. you'd be like the most prolific stand-up in the country just taking the last seven days, how's the week been for you? How many jokes in the last seven days? I've pretty much hung it up, mate. So it's been weird because I've done it for like 20 years, mm. writing jokes, and I've just stopped recently. Um, and uh, I'm really enjoying it. But it's, there are odd moments in the day you go, what am I supposed to be thinking about? Oh, nothing. I'm reading a book. <laughs> but do, do, do you th I, I will see you as maybe someone who becomes... Just a writer, either a novelist or that. I could see you, but I, I don't know if that's I think, what you're I think I'll have to be because, like, um, my kids are at an age now where I can't really go away for a tour length type mm. thing, or even the last thing I did was like a, a, a telly show where I was away for three weeks prep. So, you know, I, I, I mean, it's hard even to say, say to your kids, I'm going away for three weeks. Mm. My um, cousins, when I was growing up, in Ireland, their dad was like a fisherman, like on a trawler in Ireland, and he would go away for two weeks at a time. And I remember thinking that's the worst thing you could possibly imagine, you know, is that your dad's going to just disappear for two weeks. And now it's like, you know, two months would be quite yeah. standard on a tour. I just can't really do that anymore. I don't have any kids at the moment, but I imagine if I did and I went away for, say, four to five weeks every couple of months, they'd be most displeased. Um, I just want to touch on the American Autopsy, which I think is a TV show that you were alluding to there that you were working for. And I read someone talking about your final monologue on that show. And this is verbatim what they said. The final monologue by Frankie Boyle is a work of staggering genius and tear-inducing wit. How did you feel it went? <laughs> uh, I can't remember, man. It's just like you're trying to hold so much stuff in your head yeah. at the time. But, I, I mean, I do think there's a thing where it's related to that thing of how much you have to work. If you're doing stuff that's... I'm trying to think of how to describe it here. I tend to think of it as left-wing or um, you could just say, like, challenging orthodoxy or something you have to be at a much higher standard. Mm. If I was like a right winger doing that show, like, or writing a column even, I mean, I could just pretty much bash it out because there's like, A, there's no competition. There's not really many funny people on that side of uh, debate. Uh, but also you're just much less observed. People fret much less about your jokes and how they'll be received and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, for that show, I, I was writing for three weeks. I'd already written the monologue before I started that. Mm and did maybe about 20 odd warm-up gigs, mm. you know, and it's really hard to maintain that over any kind of length of time. Mm. Like, like to produce, yeah. you know, to do a series of that would be like oh, four or five months writing. Yeah, well this is why, you know, Frankie Boyle is now moving out of comedy to become the writer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or maybe the nothing. Or maybe, okay. Frankie Ball might be moving out of comedy, but it's not necessary to say he's becoming a writer. <laughs> he might just do nothing. But then he may become a writer. I mean, I'm trying to put a positive spin on this. You know, like... Thanks, man. <laughs> um, Should we explain that we know each other? Well, we can. Yeah, well... Let's do that. What people might not know is... I've always thought I was a bit of a catalyst for your success. <laughs> 
because um, we first met at the Tina Park Festival when yourself and Miles Jupp were doing comedy inserts and I was interviewing the bands. And I had just moved to London at the time and then about a year later, I get the message from Miles Jupp saying, Frankie's coming down to London for a few meetings. I immediately thought, this is great. He's a very talented chap and it's good that he's breaking out of Caledonia. And then came the request, can he stay with you? I was like, no problem at all. And then we met up in, uh, in Camden Town. That's right, yeah. And then we came up to my house. And this is, I'd like to direct this into camera. That's a bit Trump-esque, isn't it? I was like, That's what, it's something I want to say to camera. When people come to your house, you don't necessarily expect a gift. Um, you don't necessarily want a gift. But Frankie came with a gift, a musical gift. And my next question to you is, can you remember that album that you gave me? Uh, was it Air? Yes. Right. Air. <laughs> Talkie Walkie, which I would claim is the best Air album. Moon Safari was a big sell and all that, but Talkie Walkie is tremendous. Now, what I didn't tell you at the time was I already had it, so it became a double. <laughs> and I didn't want to say. But, um, but when you were down for those meetings, I think those were the meetings for like Mock the Week, all that type of stuff. Uh, yeah, I was doing office pilots, wasn't yeah. I? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. And then you became the biggest kind of. The, well, the supposed controversial face of comedy and all that, but I just knew you as a guy who had good taste in music and gave Of course, me a you had the album, it hadn't occurred to me. Yeah. People know so much more about music than me. I remember um, that thing with Miles at Tea in the Park was like they had a regular thing where like the up and coming comics of the the, the day would, mm. would sort of have a slot on it where they were the, the roving reporter yeah, kind of thing, yeah. right? So you were the presenter and then, like, whoever it was would go out and sort of talk to the bams that were at the yeah, the park, right. right? But me and Miles was, well, I was so misanthropic <laughs> and Miles was so aloof that we decided to do it without talking to the public. Yeah. So we sort of had some conceit where we sort of fell through a portal into another dimension. Yeah. and you appeared in this woodland or something. Appeared in a wood and fought against sort of deer-headed monks, <laughs> yeah. which was the only costumes we could find at the yeah. BBC and like people were I think that thing that kind of thing in Scotland as well where it's just like shouting into a void it's like how weird would that have needed to have been to uh -huh. get any kind of reaction it was just like nothing it mm -hmm. just everybody's on tramadol and it just kind of washes <laughs> over them then. That was, that, was, that was the same Teen Park Festival when I saw one of the toilets getting shoved over you know one of the portal right. things and of course all the the excrement goes to one end and people are coming out just literally covered in faecal <laughs> matter. Oh, man. Well, some of them still still with the war cry, Teen the Park! Teen the Park! It's like, what has to happen at a festival for me to have a bad experience? Like, <laughs> well, they might do it at Glasgow Green this year, yeah, you see that? Because so, yeah. they had a thing uh, years ago, it was called Gig on the Green, and I did the comedy tent, mm. and... Uh, it was like you're going down and it's not like a normal music festival. You're just sort of going festival goer, student, festival goer, predator. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what's he doing? That? It's just like, you know, these like kind of Hogarthian like predators. Um, there was, you were talking, maybe, maybe you were getting interviewed by someone at the Edinburgh TV Festival and you said that... All oh, right, Richard Doisman, didn't you? Yeah, you said that TV comedy had gone back yeah. to, to the 70s. It's all about ratings. It's what the man on the street kind of likes and I immediately thought it's hard not to hear you say that and then to not think of the Sid Vicious quote when Sid Vicious was asked oh, about right. his music and I've met the man in the street and he's like yeah <laughs> yeah I mean what I was actually saying was I think slightly different from that which is you could draw a line between the 70s entertainment and now and not knowing there had been anything in between mm. so like you know if you looked at whatever the panel shows are now at Tin Cats or whatever um you would recognise all that from like Bath Night TV when you were mm. a kid. Do you remember like it was like mm. uh, Lucky Ladders and Celebrity Squares yeah. and Blanket, and they got celebrities on and bammed them up and did lines on them, and it was all sort of the same thing. And the the comedy was observational largely, mm. and you get that now with McIntyre or John Bishop or whoever. That's not to say any of those are bad shows. It's just like you you could do that without having gone through alternative comedy, which was you know mm. I, what I found amazing, and you know I I, th I think that's a kind of sad thing that it's not retained more of the the originality of like the 80s and the thing is the one tv show that i found was i got a real buzz about and was original was limmy's show 
you know, your your fellow your fellow Glaswegian, and it was kind of more a sketch show. You know, it wasn't a sitcom or anything. But I thought it was really the hit rate in that show was terrific. But how are they not commissioning him to do stuff? So I like, don't know. you know, if he does that. So it's BBC Scotland. They're not really producing anything else. They don't seem to be doing much comedy, and or you know, certainly not producing it in house. So they should just be going do it, do it the fuck you like. We've not had a successful comedy show in ten years. You've done something that's artistically successful. Just make your next thing. Mm. On that note, Frankie, <laughs> as the future commissioner editor for BBC Arts and Beyond, um, I always say. To whoever interview, it's been a pleasure interviewing them because it because it is, but it's also good to see old friends. It's good to see you again, man. <laughs> Hello there, don't forget to like our pages, to follow us and subscribe to our channel. That way you won't miss anything we're doing. Anything. Because what we're doing is for you, and if I may say so, a pleasure it is too.